Hey there guys, Paul here from TheEngineeringMindset.com. In this video, we're going to be looking at all the different HVAC systems we find inside typical supermarkets and food retailers to understand the basics of how they each work and how they are integrated to make the building functional. You can learn even more about how technology is making supermarkets smarter, safer and better for the environment by downloading the free Smart Store ebook by Dan Foss, who have kindly sponsored this video. Inside the free ebook, they outline five trends that are shaping the food retail industry as well as practical steps that can be taken to stay ahead of the curve. Links for this can be found in the video description down below. So the first thing we usually notice when we enter a store is the air curtain. That's the blast of air you feel when you enter the building. If it's a large store, we might find them being used in the loading bays also. The air curtain is suspended above the doorway or it might be built into the ceiling. Inside the unit is a blower fan which is driven by a small electric motor. This fan forces the air into a funnel to provide a powerful jet of air. You can get versions which provide heated and or cooled air. For heated air, it's pretty common to find a thin tube heat exchanger, but alternatively, it could also use an electrical heating element. For heating or cooling, we could use a heat pump which uses a refrigerant to heat or cool the air depending on the season. Additionally, we can integrate this into a VRF heat recovery system to provide heating and cooling to different parts of the store at the same time, but we're going to look at that in detail a little later in this video. So why do we use the air curtain? Well, the air curtain creates a barrier between the indoor and the outdoor air. The two airs will be at different temperatures and humidities. The stores had to pay a lot of money to get the indoor air at a certain temperature and humidity, so we don't want that air to leave the store and we also don't want too hot or too cold air from outside coming into the store. So these air curtains will greatly reduce the two mixing. They also prevent dust, dirt and insects from flying into the store. Ventilation. The next thing we notice is the forced ventilation around the store. In many large supermarkets, you'll see the ductwork for this suspended from the ceiling. The ducts come from either air handling units or rooftop units. Both do a very similar role, although rooftop units are more common in supermarkets simply because they are an all-in-one HVAC solution. As the name suggests, rooftop units are located on the roof of the supermarket and you'll usually find multiple units depending on the size of the store. Inside the unit is a large fan which pulls fresh air into the unit and also pushes this into the building. Some units will use this pushing force to also push the dirty used air out of the building. The air passes through a filter to remove any dust and dirt, and it then passes through a heat exchanger where it will be heated or cooled to meet the required conditions. For heating, the rooftop unit uses either an electrical heating element, a gas burner, or a heat pump. For cooling, the unit will use either a split air conditioning unit or a heat pump. The other unit we mentioned was the air handling unit. This works in a very similar way, although these are usually much larger and typically housed indoors. These units will also filter, heat, cool and humidify the air, although the heating and cooling is provided by a remotely connected chiller or boiler. There will usually also be an exhaust AHU to maintain pressure in the building and extract the used air. If the returning air is within certain limits of CO2, humidity and temperature, then some of it can be recirculated to reduce the heating or cooling load. If you look up at the ceiling in large doors, you might see a large box connected to a short run of ductwork. This box is called a fan coil unit. Inside the fan coil unit is a fan with a small motor, a filter and also one or two heat exchangers. The fan coil just circulates air locally within the building and tops up the heating or cooling to the local area as needed. They also help to distribute fresh air within the building. The fan coil units can provide heating and or cooling and the heat exchangers will be connected to either a heat pump, VRF, split AC, chiller or boiler. We've covered air handling units, rooftop units and fan coils in detail in our previous videos. Do check those out, links down below. We're going to have some pretty bad odours generated in the building from places such as toilets, food preparation areas as well as car parks. This air needs to be extracted from the building, so these will be connected to dedicated exhaust systems. We might find several of these areas connected into one system or a separate extract for each one. There are various different fan types used, but one of the most common and simplest designs is to use a centrifugal type fan like this. The fan uses a belt driven motor to rotate the fan blades and create a pressure difference. This will suck air in on one side and force it out the other. Space heating and cooling. For staff areas or small stores, we might find a gas boiler system providing heating through radiators and trench heaters, especially in Europe. In the most basic system, we find a circulation pump pushing water around a closed system. 
This will be picking up heat from the gas-fired boiler and delivering this to the radiators. Despite the name, radiators actually dissipate their heat through natural convection and not radiation, or just a tiny bit through radiation. Some stores will also use refrigeration systems to provide space heating and cooling. These will use systems such as VRF, split AC, as well as heat pumps. Split AC is the simplest type. It's just a vapor compression system which uses a compressor, a condenser, an expansion valve, and an evaporator. The compressor pushes the refrigerant around the system to collect the unwanted heat from the evaporator and bring this to the condenser. The refrigerant has a very low boiling point, so as it enters the evaporator, the heat of the room will be more than enough to make it boil and evaporate. As the refrigerant evaporates, it collects the unwanted heat and carries this away back to the compressor. This heat will then be rejected from the system via the condenser. As the unwanted heat is collected from the evaporator, this will be exchanged for a cooling effect. This type of system will only provide cooling. The next type of system we'll likely find is the VRF, or Variable Refrigerant Flow System. This uses a variable speed compressor as well as some electronic controls and sensors to vary the amount of refrigerant flowing around the system in order to match the cooling load. This allows the unit to provide cooling to multiple locations simultaneously, although again this version only provides cooling. The next variation is the heat pump. This allows the unit to provide cooling or heating. It can switch between cooling and heating, but it can only provide one of these at a time. It does this by utilizing the reversing valve. This diverts the hot discharge refrigerant from the compressor to either the outdoor unit or the indoor unit, depending on whether the unit is in heating or cooling mode. There will likely be multiple expansion valves and non-return valves used to ensure the refrigerant flows along the correct pipes. In cooling mode, it operates like a normal cooling system, collecting heat from the indoor unit and dissipating this to the atmosphere via the outdoor unit. In heating mode, the system operates in reverse, collecting heat from outdoors and dissipating this indoors. The boiling point of the refrigerant is extremely low, so even the outside air in winter can cause it to boil and evaporate. Even when it's cold outside, the air in most cases will still contain enough thermal energy to boil the refrigerant and therefore provide heating. Another very common system we find is the VRF heat recovery system. This uses variable speed compressors as well as multiple electronic sensors, valves and controls to provide both heating and cooling at the same time to different parts of the building. In cooling mode, the VRF unit operates like any split AC unit, absorbing heat from the indoors and dissipating this via the external heat exchanger. In heating mode, it operates like a heat pump, picking up thermal energy from the outside ambient air and transferring this to the indoor heat exchangers. In mixed mode, the system can provide cooling in the normal refrigeration cycle, but it can also send heat from the compressor discharge and channel this to the indoor unit to provide heating. After the refrigerant has provided heating, it can then also flow into another unit to provide cooling. So what about food storage? We're almost certainly going to find a cold store in most supermarkets, and these really vary in size. These use a refrigeration system with an externally located condenser and compressor to extract the unwanted heat from the food within the storeroom and dissipate this into the atmosphere. This diagram shows just a basic system, but many now come with electronic control valves, sensors and speed control compressors to maximize the efficiency. When it comes to the shop floor, we will likely find some display refrigerators. This standalone type usually has a small and simple vapor compression refrigeration system, which is compactly installed under the unit. Sometimes the condenser is mounted to the back of the fridge and this one doesn't use a fan. The expansion valve might be just a capillary tube on a very basic unit, but newer, more efficient ones come with electronic controls. This all-in-one plug-and-play design allows the fridge to be moved around the store very easily, but the heat it removed from inside the refrigerator, as well as the heat from the compressor, is simply discharged into the store. So this will increase the cooling load and cause the space cooling to work harder. Larger refrigerators will likely use an external condenser and compressor. This is a much better option because it completely removes the heat from the refrigerator and also the space and then dissipates this into the atmosphere, which is therefore more efficient. However, the refrigerator is fixed in place. Larger stores with aisles of refrigerators and maybe some freezers too will likely use centralized refrigeration systems. These could be a booster system where the refrigerant is split between different temperature lines and then the low temperature refrigerant is boosted using a secondary compressor. It could also be a parallel system which uses another compressor in parallel to recycle some of the vapor from the receiver. A growing trend is to use transcritical CO2 refrigeration systems and these will often use a multi-ejector to improve the operation and climates that it can be installed in. And we might even find cascade type systems used in the larger stores or in industrial scale sites. 
We've covered all of these systems in detail previously, links to those in the video description down below. Okay guys, that's it for this video, but to continue your learning, then check out one of the videos on screen now and I'll catch you there for the next lesson. Don't forget to like, subscribe and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, as well as the engineeringmindset.com.